at Chelsea last night, LB looked really good. Yeah, yeah, they did, didn't they? Um, on the flip side, Villa were, were shocking. Like, really, really, really poor. Like, Douglas Louise McGinn in the middle, I thought, was was super poor. Um, but, yeah, man, fair dues to Chelsea. I mean, it's no surprise. Chelsea do have that in the locker. They've got some decent players, haven't they? You know what I mean? But it's it's consistency. It's consistency that Chelsea don't have at the moment. You know what I mean? They'll probably lose their next match. So, yeah, I mean, Enzo looked great. That's probably the best I've seen Enzo for me personally. When, when I've watched Chelsea, that was his best game that I've watched him in. Madueke on the right was class. Even even um, even a guy, uh, Jackson, on the, on the left-hand side, thought had a pretty good game. So, yeah, listen, it's, it's a good result for them. Despite their horrific league form, they're in the Cup final, Carabao Cup. They're in the fifth round of the, of the FA Cup. Only London, only London club in the FA Cup left. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, there we go. Wow. I was yeah. shameless, man. Tell you, you know, shameless done, man. You. Come on, you know, you know this, man. Come on. You know, like 11. You're like 20 <laughs> points off the top four and you're celebrating that. Bro, I'm just speaking that. facts. We're the only London club left in the FA oh, Cup. It's a fact. It's not, it's not my opinion. It's a fact. God, God, please, please, bro. David, David, are we the only London club left in the FA Cup? Yes or no? That's not my point. They need to be mentioned, bro. It doesn't need to be I mentioned. I will mention it because it's a fact. No, no, I'm happy that Don mentioned that. I'm happy he didn't mention that because I it wanted to fact. know that. But this is the issue with you, Don, and I think Terry said it. Terry said it on the last uh, Top 6 show. And I'm going to say it right now. Here's your issue, Don. You want to be one day Muslim, one day Christian, one day Jew, one day Buddhist. You want to be everything. Ah. You just flip-flop, bro, crazy. And you just How keep going back and by, forth. By, by the minute, fact. That's not my opinion. No, no, I know it's a fact. Thank you for stating that fact. But the way you celebrated it, the way you seemed very excited to talk about it is insane to me. And here's the thing. This is why when people come at you and for the things that you say to back your team and you're like, no, no, but no one's been criticizing my team more than me. But then you do things like this. Like, look at it. How come David didn't say it? Can you explain to me why David didn't say it? I'm pretty sure David knew that too. You know me. You know me well enough. I actually didn't know that. Staffy, you know me well enough to know when I'm in my shameless bag. Come on now, Staffy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know that. Go on the TL. You see Don shameless. I am very shameless on Twitter. Don, Don, I tell you now. You know how much love I've got for you, Don, but I feel like you're... You know, like they say, like some people get drunk or they get angry and the truth comes out. I feel like when you're in your sh shameless mood, that's the real, that's what you really think. But nah, 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 nah. I said nah, we we're going to lose so. yesterday. I said we we're going to lose yesterday, bro. I predicted that we'd lose the game. I was not confident at all. I was surprised that we won the game. I was surprised. Like you, you, you did do well yesterday. David, do you think it's going to continue into uh, this weekend? You go up against Crystal Palace on Monday. Are you confident that, that the manager will get it right again? We might win this week. It's what happens the week after and the week after that. Because as I said at the start of the season, we are going to be very up and down because the thing I've been preaching on the terrace for years is young players are by definition inconsistent. So why would you expect consistency from young players? It doesn't make sense. To me, it just didn't make sense. So we might win the next game. But, I'm, but my thing with Chelsea fans is we won yesterday and I've seen a massive change in tune from all of them. And we might win on Monday and I'm going to see a massive change in tune if we win on Monday. But then if we lose to Man City, which is not the worst thing in the world, but it could happen, are they all going to sit there and go, I want Poch out again? That's my that's my thing. I am, I am not Poch out and I will not be Poch out for, I don't even think I'm going to be Poch out for like two years. Because to me, I just don't, I know genuinely, I don't see... How that, that's I don't, a poor mentality. That's a poor mentality. No, no, no. no because Don, 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 my, my, my issue with most Chelsea fans is when I ask them, if you are pot shout, how are you going to fix the problem at the club currently? I get I get answers like we bring in Gary O'Neill because he can bring in our footballing philosophy because he's done it at Wolves. I, I get told, oh yeah, play Dylan Williams at left back, even though he, he might be 16 has never played, you know, a professional game in his life. At least he's a fullback you can get with. I get really stupid answers. So until someone can provide me with a genuine way of fixing our current situation, which isn't stupid, like, oh, I'm going to bring in Zinedine Zidane tomorrow, right? <laughs> I'm not going to be out because because it Because we need consistency. Everything about this club right now is inconsistent. And the, the thing that separates Liverpool and City from everyone else is consistency. So can we at least be consistent in one com in one department? And I don't David, think Poch uh, is. Uh, yeah. I don't think Poch is the is the is the issue that is making us this massively inconsistent team. Has he made oh, mistakes? Oh. Yes, yes. Has he made mistakes? Oh yes, but he's made mistakes. And you know what? Every manager does. 
But even when he's made, Matt Pep will make mistakes, but Man City's players will bail him out when he makes those mistakes. That's the difference. Our players haven't bailed us out. That's that. That's my issue. Yeah, but the, so the thing is, though, yeah, when you talk, when, manager. I, I, listen, I, I, bro, it, not in this context, man. Not in, not in this context. These are some young players that we've got. As much as I rate some of the players that we've got here, like I've mentioned, Caicedo, Enzo, you know, Nkuku, Palmer, all of these guys, I rate, I like these guys. They're good players, right? But when a manager is 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 unable to make basic changes that everyone can see aren't working week after week, I'm sorry, you can't just say, yeah, it's a progress, it's, it's a process even, let's just keep him in there because he is a big problem right now. I agree, he's not the only he problem, is. but he's a major problem right now. Two yesterday, years. all he did in that game yesterday, yesterday, two years is crazy, David. Two yesterday, years, all he did, David. Two years is crazy, bro. Two years is crazy for you to say that. Because I don't, oh, oh, David, okay, yeah. okay, okay, let me put it like this. I will, I will only be potch out when I see a better option available. And right now, there is not a better That's not option. our job. That's not our job. No, that's that's not our job. Let me ask you a question, LB. LB, in your opinion, are there better options out there right now than Pochettino to manage Chelsea? There's, there's, there's a lot of better managers out there. A lot of better managers out there. Even the ones that are at clubs. Chelsea are a big club. Who are, who yeah, are, ava who are available, who we can buy without any, you know, a potential... David, the major problem with Poch right now is that he's misprofiling a lot of players, bro, right? Yesterday, he set us up correctly and it's no surprise we played the way that we did. Aston Villa had their strongest team out, pretty much, apart from um, Ezri. Uh, Ezri was injured, yeah? They had their strongest team. We played them away. They've only lost to... Is it Newcastle, Terry, that they've lost to this season at home? Other than that, yes, they yeah. haven't lost a game at, at Villa Park, right? I said on Dan Potts' show yesterday, big up Dan Potts, I said, I'm not confident. We're going to lose the game, right? As much as it's my team, I, 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 there's nothing, there was nothing for me to be confident about based on what I've seen from the manager as well as the players, okay? But yesterday, bro, he made a slight tweak. He put Enzo and Caicedo next to each other. Caicedo wasn't left on the island by himself. He actually had someone that he could combine with. And that is why we kept beating that press. And that is why, as a team overall, we had a little bit more balance because the engine of our team was, was, well, was well drilled and it looked a lot better and the instructions were a lot clearer. So it's no surprise that these players, as young as they are, they performed. If you look at Aston Villa's team, Mark, they're the Mark, ones that so, looked like they were the young players, bro. And we had the average Mark, age of 22 years. Done, done, done. So what you the saying, one second. Wait, 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 one second, I just, I just want to answer this. So what you just said right now, if I'm understanding this correctly, that mm. Poch had to go through some trial and error to get the formation and the tactics correct yesterday, right? So no. you, you, you you don't think you got it right yesterday? You just, you no, just he, said no, he, he, got, he, he got He got it right yesterday, but what okay. I'm saying, you, you, said, you said you had to go through some trial and error. He could have done yes. this way before, bro. He's done no, it okay, a couple wait. of times already. Okay, but here's my point. Here's my point. Mm. This is a new squad with a new manager. And what you just explained is inconsistency. Isn't that what's supposed to happen with a new squad and a new manager? Stappy, Especially you don't play, you don't a play young Ben Chilwell left wing. You don't play Enzo in the 10 consistently with Gallagher in the pivot. You don't play Levi Cole consistently at left back when you've got Matson there, right? You don't consistently make Enzo run away from Caicedo week after week. We are now in February. It's not, it's not us saying make all these changes in September, a month after the season started. We are in February, bro. No, we he had a lot of injuries, in so he had, to, he had to keep switching it up. To figure out the even formula, even okay? if but we've had a lot of injuries, Staffy, but there's been a lot of games where he's had a balanced team that he could have put out without guys being injured, and he still refuses to do it. Okay, he still but here's refuses my, to do it. Here's my and even, like I said, and even yesterday, the tweak in midfield was like I said, putting Enzo and Caicedo near each other, not away from each okay, other. No, no, I get that. Together, I get bro. that. And I, I do think he's gotten a lot of tactics wrong. And I went at some point and I was like, you know what? At the end of the day, this is a results business, and he's not getting the results, and he needs to go because the performance was also regressing. But yes, said after this performance, I stand corrected. I think I was wrong for saying that, and I'll tell you why. Mm. This manager has not been in here for a season. Most of these players haven't even spent a year in this league, let alone Chelsea. Most of these guys that you bought from last year to this year are players that didn't even play in the Premier League. So they themselves are going through some adapt uh, adaptation in this country, let alone Chelsea, okay? I agree, I agree. So I'm looking at all this, and I'm like, if a manager would... I, I'm guessing you guys are the youngest squad in the league, right? Because I've heard that before. A lot of Chelsea yeah. guys told me that. You guys have the, the youngest squad in the league. So if, if a new manager to a club with the youngest squad in the league doesn't get to try and, f and, and, and mix up things in his first season to figure out all his players their best positions, their worst positions, this formula works, this doesn't work. If he doesn't get to do this now, when would he get to do it? And 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 one more thing. 
I heard this a lot also from Chelsea fans. I want to address this. They said, well, Arsenal had the youngest squad in the league last year. Okay, that's a very good point. But let's add the context around it. That Arsenal squad last year, or was it two years ago? I don't know. I'm just going by what people told me if it's last year or two years ago. How long have most of these players on the Arsenal team have played together leading up to last season versus how long has this Chelsea team played together? Because Saka, as an example, has been playing there for, what, three, four years now? Martinelli, the same thing. Most of these guys that are very young in the Arsenal team last year already had chemistry together, already been with the manager for about four years. That's not the same thing that you'd say with Poch. My issue with Chelsea fans, and this is not directed to anyone, Sam said it perfectly in the summer. He said the worst team to have a project with is Chelsea fans because they're very impatient. And when you really deep it, when you really think of it in depth, this Chelsea, uh, the, the, this current Chelsea, the club, I'm not talking about just the team. This club right now is not anything similar to the, to the club that you guys had under Roman. Because I said this analogy, and I'm going to say it again. Just pretend that Terry tomorrow sells the football terrace. There's no more Terry. There's no more KJ. None of us are here. None of the, 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 the straight facts people are here. So it's a new, a new channel. Would you logically tune in to the next show and expect the same exact content? No. Not because it still says the football terrace means that you're going to get the same thing you used to get for years. Because the owner, all the way down to the, to, 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 to the employees, are no longer here. That's the same thing with Chelsea. When I look at Chelsea, the only thing that you guys are holding your, your club, to, when they say standards, and I get that because I do the same thing with my club. But the only reason you stay standards, you, you say standards because when you used to win, when you look at the club, when you used to win, nothing from that club is currently staying until, until this day besides the name. Everything has changed from the owner to the players. So the whole structure has changed. How can I logically expect the same thing from Chelsea of four, five, six, seven years ago when everything has changed from top to bottom? That's Steffi, the one thing. That's way more complex than it yeah, is. Yeah, way, know, way more, like, way more of a It's underperforming as a manager. It's not complex. It's, 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 the, it's, no, my, it's the facts. My LB. question, my my question. So, so Stephy, aren't you the same no, guy no, that no, gets? Wait, 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 you're the wait, same wait, guy that gets wait, onto your fan base when 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 you lose the game when when you lose the game and people start talking about the Glazers. Yeah, I knew you're the same. You're the same guy. You're the same guy that gets onto your fan base that do that. So why are we now talking about the owners when Pochettino is meant to be managing this team? I didn't, I didn't blame. Get him paid, we, we, didn't get him do paid that. ten million. No, you're saying oh everything's been changed from top to bottom. Everything, everything that you're saying, I agree with. But it, it, it holds no relevance to the conversation that we're having. Of course about it Pochettino does. Of course it does. Tactics. It holds a lot of relevance. Pochettino and his tactics have not been good enough, bro. He has not been good I enough. Know, I know. I agree me. with you. Listen, I agree so with what's you. Your, what's your point no, about no, going I agree to with you. The reason I agree with David is because David needs a little bit more consistency before he can make big decisions like that. Because he knows, Poch is an example, he's not the only issue. Is he an issue? 100%. I think Poch is an issue. But the, but, but the, the boat you guys are on right now is something that none of us are familiar with. You can't use my club, LB's club, uh, Patrick's club, or anyone's club as an example. Because no one went through a whole renovation from top to bottom in a matter of less than two years, the way you guys did, and literally rebuilt a whole squad in less than two years or less than a year and a half. And they come in and they expect the results right away. I've listened to some Chelsea fan, uh, fan channels yesterday. And here's the issue that I have with them. They saying, oh, well, I'll only be punching if he gets his top four. Okay, by what logic is he supposed to get top four? Because That's he spent crazy. a billion. Because he crazy, spent no. a billion. Okay, wait, wait one second. He spent a billion. Okay, did he spend it on current players? Or did he spend it on future players? Because that's the context that's very missed. Okay, but so he spent it on future players what, what, because what? your squad is young. One second. Well, you bought most of your players. We're not even proven in Europe when you bought them. And I'll tell you why. Enzo played six months in Portugal when you guys bought him. Was that enough time for him to be a big player in Europe? No, but you bought him because of his potential. Okay, Caicedo, same thing. He started one year in the Premier League and you dropped, what, $125 million on him or whatever it is? He started million, one and year and in, and the in the Premier League. One clubs in the in the in the in the Prem looking at him, including Chelsea. It wasn't just us. No, no, I, I hear that. I hear that. Now. But there's a difference between Caicedo going to my team that had a good year last year, and he would have came into an established midfield, or same thing as going to Liverpool. If he went to Liverpool, an established team that's been there for a while, then a team that is all new. This is what I keep telling you. All your players are new. All your players are, don't even have the familiar, familiarity of playing with each other because they haven't played with each other for at least a year. You bought most of them last January and most of them in the summer. How can I expect a bunch of kids who need time to adapt to a league 
to once, as soon as they meet each other, let's become a top six team. Let's become a top four team. By what logic? What proof do you have from these players that they've done in the Premier League? Have you seen any of your players, or most of them at least, be those be these players that played in this league and consistently got top four and was winning leagues? You Stuffy, can name where, them outside of Sterling. Yeah, you can't name anyone.